Hello and welcome to another episode of Krita Essentials. Today we're going to be going over layers. I'm going to be using Krita 4.0.3 for this tutorial, and of course, it should work the same in every version of Krita. Just might look a little different. So without further ado, go ahead and open yourself up a new document. I just picked the default settings, a thousand by a thousand as well. And get yourself a brush you want to use. I'm going to go with this one and set it to a size that you like. So when you open it, you're going to have this layers dialog here. If you're not familiar with layers, you've probably been living under a rock. But uh, nothing wrong with that. I'll go ahead and explain real quick. A layer just lets you separate up your art into different visual components. So I can have something... I can have a, a rock on one layer and a tree on a different layer. And then I can hide them separately, edit them separately, and they don't interact with each other at all. Not, not entirely true, but for the most part. So, how do you use these? Of course, if you have a layer selected and you draw, it draws on that layer. So you can make this cruddy smiley face here. Alright, so that's something on the layer and if you click the little eye here of course you can hide it as the eye would imply you can also hide this background layer and you can see the transparency through it without hiding the smiley face and I'm sure just from this demonstration if you're not already familiar with layers you can see why they're important it lets you keep things separate so that everything's easier when it comes to those later stages so, of course, you can add your own layers. Just click the little plus sign here, or there's also keyboard shortcuts for all this stuff. But when you're on a graphics tablet, you're probably going to be using the buttons for a lot of it, unless you want to go back to your keyboard. So, of course, you can draw on this other layer. So we do other layer. And we can hide that separately from our smiley face. But you can do more than just hide and show layers. You have these three buttons over here that I'm going to go over real quick. So the first one is this lock. Pretty self-explanatory, but if you lock a layer, it'll prevent you from drawing on it until you unlock it. So once it's unlocked, you can draw on it again. And then if you decide you don't like a layer completely, you can the delete key to clear it out. And of course, controls you to bring it back if you didn't want to delete it. And uh, you really want to keep this lock on most of the time, though. Because the last thing you want to do is accidentally spend a lot of time drawing on the wrong layer. Trust me, I've done it many, many times. It's not fun. And it's a lot of extra work to fix. So use this judiciously. Lock the layers that you're not editing. You'll thank me later. So, you also have this Inherit Alpha. I'm not going to show you that right this second, but I will in a bit when we get to groups. But after that, you have this uh, Alpha Lock. So if we go to our smiley face layer and turn that on, and then try to draw on that layer, you'll notice you can't do anything. It's because that Alpha Lock, as the name implies, makes it so you can't edit the Alpha on the layer. However, you can edit the color. So if we select a color like red, we can draw over it, which not terribly useful. The inherent alpha is a lot more useful in the end. This is good for coloring a line or something if you realize you made something the wrong color. So in order to use this inherent alpha, which is basically a direct upgrade from that alpha lock, First, we needed to talk about layer groups. So a layer group is just a way to keep sections of layers together. So this, in, in a real world example of this would be, let's say you're doing some uh, line art and you have your main character in the middle of the page. Your main character might have their own entire group of layers so you can move them around and edit them without having to mess with the background at all. But you can still have the different parts of the character separate into their own groups inside that group. So you can have groups inside of groups even. So how do you make a group? 
Well, there's a couple options. If you just are on any layer and go ahead and create a group layer, it'll dump this new layer in that has a little folder instead of a pen and paper icon. And then you can drop your layers into it. And if you hide the group, it hides all the layers contained within. Same with that lock as well. So now we can kind of look at this inherit alpha. So if you turn it on, you'll notice that it disappears. That's because when the inherit alpha on, sort of like the alpha lock, you can only draw over transparent pixels. But instead of taking pixels from, or I mean uh, opaque pixels, but instead of taking pixels from the current layer, it takes them from all the layers behind it. But if it's in a group, it'll only go to the end of the group. So let me demonstrate real quick so you can get a better idea. If I create a new layer above both of these and turn on Inherit Alpha, you'll notice that, like the Alpha Lock, I can only draw over the already opaque pixels. But if I turn it off, you can see it's everywhere. This is good for making shadows, for example. Because you can, uh, if you have line art, you can just group a shadow layer together with your fill layer and then you won't have to worry about going outside the lines. So that's quite a handy tool to have. And of course you can put groups inside groups like I said earlier. There's a lot of things you can do with this. That's most of the basics. The only real thing left to talk about is layer styles. I can make a whole separate video about these, so all I'm going to really tell you is that they exist, and I'll show you one real quick, just so you can get an idea of the sort of things they do. This is why I, at the beginning I said that I added a little caveat to that layers can't interact with each other, because this determines how the layers interact with each other. So normal, just everything covers up everything else perfectly. So let's make a ball here out of uh, just some gray on a... Let's use this other layer layer. It's not a ball-shaped ball. My tablet's not calibrated right now, but whatever. Nah. So let's say we want to add shadow to this egg. We could just go straight in and select a darker color. And paint over it. Or, uh, Oh, well, it didn't work. Whatever. Or just paint over it with that alpha lock to get our shadow. But that doesn't really work if you have things that are more than one color. See, because it doesn't show through the shadows like it would in real life. So what you can do, set this to multiply. And of course that's too dark now. But if we paint with a lighter shade we can still get our shadow, but it doesn't cover up anything else on the layer. And um, that's just an example of layer styles at work. Or, um, yeah. So that's pretty much all there is for this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful to you and kind of a complete beginner thing, but I'll try to make some more complex tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching and have a good day.